I must congratulate you on your efforts during this war. I'm told you have proven yourself to be an outstanding adventurer and warrior. You remind me of the princess. The similarities in your approach are striking, especially when you told me you wanted to win. I hope you will see her soon. Hey, Auroron! How are the Masters of the Nightwind doing? Granny C. Lolly's been there the whole time, and she's a tough one. I think we should be fine. I'm sure there'll be some patching up to do, though. That's a job for the young folks. I should probably head back so I can pitch in. Do you need support from the Fatui? Uh, probably not. There are a lot of older folks in our tribe, and I suspect they would find your comrades' presence a little distressing. Right, because often they look like a bunch of intimidating thugs. Well, also in my tribe, excessive use of elemental energy is bad for your eyesight. Oh, right. Okay. I'm still somewhat in disbelief that a united people prevailed against the Abyss. Do I sense some regret in your words? A degree of regret is inevitable. But above all, I feel profound admiration. You did a great job, Kachina. Oh, you're much more confident now. Seems like winning the pilgrimage gave you a real boost. I spoke to your mom and dad. They were singing your praises. They said the world's your oyster now. How are things at the people of the Springs base? There are some casualties, but the overall mood is very positive. I reckon they'll start rebuilding pretty soon. Same situation for the children of Echoes. Oh, that's a great idea. Let's do it together. Let's hope that their sacrifice marks the beginning of a new age for Natlan. An age of unprecedented peace. Oh, wow, if you're making uh, candles, I have some materials you can use. They're in the warehouse. Should have plenty to spare. Ah, good point. I'll go instead. Unless you want to get punched in the face. What is it with you, Ahau? Why are you so incapable of being nice? The Collective of Plenty was the furthest from the Abyss's entry point, so they didn't have as many monsters to deal with. From what I hear, they got off relatively unscathed. But it might have been a different story if Chaska hadn't gotten there when she did. That's good to hear. All's well that ends well! Everyone else is enjoying the celebration, but a house still being as aggravating as ever. Does he have a chip on his shoulder? What's it about?
Ah, welcome. You seem a little out of sorts. Are you just tired, or...? <sighs> I guess I am. You know, when I was up there in the sky, I could see all of Natland stretching out below me. People everywhere, giving everything they had for a chance at victory. I just... <sighs> if only I'd been quicker. Maybe they wouldn't have... And Koichi. Maybe she'd still... <sighs> I'm sorry. Now is not the time for that. Um... <clears throat> Fruit juice, right? Uh, make it a large? <sighs> True. My 500 year plan has almost come to fruition. Just one last step to go. Namely, my final battle against the Abyss. But battle is second nature to me, so... I'm not feeling a huge amount of pressure. It was so awesome. The way you exploded that thing in the sky with one arm! Punch? Are you always gonna have that kind of power from now on? Oh, uh, that was the Divine Throne unleashing my full potential. And it was only temporary. I can't wield that power for any length of time. My body wouldn't be able to handle it. Likewise, the amplified power of the Ode of Resurrection was also temporary. From now on, it's back to ancient name bearers only. Correct. We dealt the Abyss a critical blow, so for the time being, it's too weak to sustain regular invasions. I hope the people will be able to enjoy this period of peace. Or rather, assuming all goes to plan, eternal peace. We've had centuries of war with the Abyss, and it's high time we brought that chapter to a close. Anyway, there's something I've been wondering about. I know you've been at the center of some major events in other nations, too, and fought many powerful foes. In this war, you were in the thick of it once again, dashing around tirelessly, supporting the fighting on all fronts. So tell me, what drives you to do this as a mere traveler passing through? Why risk life and limb for a cause that's not your own? You know, it's that mindset that distinguishes the heroes in every story. They're the natural protagonists. What I'm really trying to say is, I would love for you, with your extraordinary talent and your sense of justice, to join me in this final step. You and I, together, finally putting an end to the ever-looming threat of the Abyss. But I also don't want to take advantage of your good nature and readiness to help others. The final battle will be very dangerous, and you have the rest of your journey to consider. I'm sure you must be weary. Sleep well tonight. Let's talk again tomorrow in the Speaker's Chamber. I'll give you more details on the final battle, and then... I hope to hear your verdict. <sighs> My mind is... Still flooded with scenes from the war. I can't get the images out of my head. Maybe I need another drink. Hey, Traveler, Paimon! There you are. 
I've been looking all over for you. Oh, hey, Sweet Lolly! What's up? Listen up. I have something really important to tell you. What? Are, are you serious? Natlan must pay the price for Maoika's use of the Ruler of Death's power. That price is death. And only Maoika's death can clear the debt. I had thought that the Ruler of Death might have a change of heart after seeing the people of Natlan come together and fight so bravely. But... Even now that the war's over and the threat to Natlan is gone, it looks like that death is still set in stone. I had to know your thoughts. I want to save her, but I can't do it alone. Okay, good. That makes me feel a little better. Thank you for standing up for us. There's clearly something special about you, so... If anyone has a chance of defying the rules, that would be you. Oh, and please don't breathe a word of this to Mawika. I'm sure she's well aware of the cost of using the Divine Throne's power, but if she finds out that anyone else knows, it could ruin our chances to help. Got it. Mum's the word. Alright, that was the last major item on my to-do list. Now, since I've come all this way, I think it's finally time for a well-earned drink. I... Go, go easy, though, yeah? Don't worry, I said a drink. That means just one. All right, you little munchkin, if you keep pestering me, I'm gonna have to get serious. I get a hundred kids a day telling me they want to be the next Pyro Archon. Why should I train you? Ah, uh, nagging isn't gonna accomplish anything. No one can predict the future, and unless you have some exceptional jaw-dropping talent I'm unaware of... I can shoot those cornflakes in your kitchen from right here. Haha, <laughs> don't be ridiculous. You couldn't make that shot from all the way over here? Wait, hold on, you could hurt someone with that. Well, I'll be. You made the shot. The science of the canopy raised him tough. That's some real skill you got there, little lady. Maybe you really will be Pyro Archon one day. There's still time to join my team for the pilgrimage, you know. <sighs> no need to scowl. You lost and I won, it's no big deal. You want me to be happy for you when your turn comes, right? <sighs> so cheer up. I'll get my own ancient name soon enough. And it'll be an even better one than yours. <laughs> oh, really? Well, good luck with that. <laughs> what ancient name could beat Mollipo in our tribe? <gasps> Unless... Surely you don't mean Kiongozi? Fantastic! I can't believe I beat you in a wrestling match for once. Can't be more than a few days now until you're officially made the Pyro Archon. <laughs> Imagine me trying to schedule a wrestling session with you after that. Excuse me, Pyro Archon, but would you be able to take a day off from running the nation to wrestle with me? <laughs> I heard that the Pyro Archon inherits the knowledge stored in the Sacred Flame. 
And apparently it can change your personality. I can't help but feel a little worried. <laughs> worried that you won't be able to beat me in a wrestling match anymore? Why would I be worried about that? <laughs> Never mind. Clearly I'm just overthinking things. Why would you forget about me just because of some new job? Even if that job happens to be Archon. <laughs> Come on. One more round. After the darkness will come the dawn. No one fights alone. brighter at last. We walk the righteous path, and the Pyro Archon will guide us. The victors shall burn bright, while the losers must turn to ash. I have done what is required of me. The rules are now written into the Night Kingdom, and this will help you to stand against the Abyss. It is still not enough. All this can do is give my people courage. It will not see us through a true catastrophe. If you are to make the Natlanese alone bear the consequences of a broken world, you will have to bring more to the bargaining table. You are the greediest human I have ever met, and the fiercest negotiator. No other would seriously ask to borrow my power. My domain is death, and its power comes at a great price. The question is, are you prepared to pay? I need that power. Only a hero can truly wield it, and heroes are not afraid of dying. No, a fear of death is ingrained in all living things. If the wielder of this power cannot conquer their fear, countless innocent lives will be claimed in their stead. For only then can the price be paid. Those are the rules. Mine is a nation that will not yield to the Abyss, and it will certainly not yield to your rules. As their culture and civilization is transmitted through the generations and their faith grows, the people will go from strength to strength and reach heights that even I cannot dream of. Very well. I shall agree to help you. But I am merely a shade, and I do not have as much freedom to do as I please as you might think. Then what do you propose? Keep this a secret. If I am questioned about it, I will deny all involvement and claim that treacherous Shibalanke stole my power. That will not be a problem. Thank you. I am glad we could reach an agreement. Come in. As you know, I've asked you to come here to discuss the task of wiping out the Abyss. Oh, but first, any progress on the ancient name? 
I'm surprised she was willing to help you, and by extension, me. I'm very grateful to her. Wait, hold on. Wasn't the whole point of the ancient aims for winning that huge battle? Why would the Traveler still need one by this point? That's right. The Abyss has retreated to the depths of the Night Kingdom, a place that has long since been corrupted by Abyssal energy. If we don't finish them off and restore the Ley Lines, the threat they pose to Natlan will remain. The battle we fought yesterday, we may one day have to fight again. This is the fate Natlan has always been resigned to. For thousands of years, we have struggled on the brink of a looming darkness and never known true peace. But this time, I want to break the cycle and free us from this fate for good. With the Sacred Flame, I can protect myself from the Abyssal Corruption, but beyond that, you are the only other person who can resist it. If your ancient name can't be forged, I will go alone. But if it can, I'd really love your help. Not completely. After all, the Night Kingdom is still plagued by Abyssal Corruption. But when I used the power of the Divine Throne, it dispelled a lot of that corruption. Plus, your ancient name is a special case, so the Lord of the Night will take special care of you. In short, the Ode of Resurrection still has a number of limitations, but I can promise that it will work reliably on you. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Are we forgetting something here? What about Paimon? What's her place in all this? What? You mean we'll be separated? The Abyss is extremely devious. If you two go there together, you can bet they'll make Paimon their primary target just to put us in an impossible position. Paimon wasn't that worried, but... now she's petrified. What will you do without me? Okay, well... Paimon needs to think about this because... You're really asking a lot of her, but... Well, give Paimon some time and she'll do her best to rise to the challenge. I greatly appreciate it. Everyone in Natlan knows how important this final battle is. You will be remembered and revered long into the future, until the end of time. If you have any other questions, please ask away. As I've said, if you have any other questions, please ask away. The work of rebuilding is underway, and people are flocking to join the effort. With everyone rallying together, I'm sure it won't be long before there's no trace left of the damage done by this war. The healing process, on the other hand, uh, that's a bigger obstacle to overcome. Many are grieving, and there's simply no replacing the ones we lost. As the sun rises once more and we rediscover the ability to believe in the future, we must never forget their sacrifice. As I've said, if you have any other questions, please ask away. Hmm. False sky. I have heard this expression before, but I think this was the first proof of its existence. I think there's a lot of investigating to be done to understand what the fragments behind the sky are and why they were hidden in the first place. However, from what the Adventurer's Guild tells me, neither the split sky phenomenon nor the fragments have ever been observed in any other nation. <sighs> My guess is that the Heavenly Principles wants them kept a secret. I just hope they don't cause me any trouble over it. Oh, you should be fine. We did something much crazier back in Fontaine, and we're still here! <laughs> well, that's good to know. Anyway, the line I'm going with for the masses is Astronomical Anomaly, and I don't expect much of a backlash. Meanwhile, we can look into it at our own pace. As I've said, if you have any other questions, please ask away. That wasn't their souls we saw, but a snapshot of them in time. 
all the work of the ancient name engravers 500 years ago, who made some special modifications to their names. Their souls returned to the Night Kingdom long ago, and will have been reborn in Natland since, albeit in a different form. For all we know, they may have already lived many new lives by now. And so, even though we will never meet again, they will always be by our side in one way or another. I think that gives another layer of meaning to the phrase, no one fights alone. As I've said, if you have any other questions, please ask away. We have a temporary alliance, but I can tell that saving Natlan is not his only goal. Yeah, Paimon still doesn't get why saving Natlan would be so important to him in the first place. Unless he's just a good guy who wants to avoid another Conria. But somehow Paimon doubts it's that simple. <laughs> I wouldn't worry too much. Based on all the interactions we've had with him and knowing more about his background, I have a lot of respect for him. I don't think he has any ill intentions. <sighs> now, we should focus on the final battle. As I've said, if you have any other questions, please ask away. The Outlander with deep ties to this land returns, and this time, he is alone. The power that the Pyro Archon used to strike back at the Abyss came from the Ruler of Death. From what I know of her rules, she will demand death in return. How do you know of this? I see. So, the Ruler of Death sent you on your long journey. Natlan still has a final battle to fight, and I too have a final foe to face. For the sake of those countless lost souls, and a hope for Natlan's future, I need your help.